Hello, and welcome to Questions and Answers with Laurie and Sophie. My name is Laurie Basel, co-author of Big Ideas Math, and with me today is Sophie Murphy from Australia. Sophie and I have been asked questions about the videos and lessons and blogs that, that have been posted at the Big Ideas website. And this morning I wanted to be able to uh, have a conversation with Sophie about one of the questions that I have seen uh, reoccur many times, not only from the Big Ideas website, but in conversations with, with teachers and, and other family friends who are, who are teachers. And the question is, as we approach uh, the end of uh, this learning season, meaning as we approach the end of the school year, what is it that I can reasonably do right now? Uh, many, many teachers have found themselves in a situation where the school year, um, they know that they're not going back uh, in, a, in, um, in person to be with their students. So remotely, what is it I should be doing? And uh, certainly my advice, Sophie, would be that we need to be focusing on what are those big ideas? What are the big standards uh, in mathematics that we want to ensure that our students have learned? And how is it that we actually overlearn them to make sure that we have that information uh, in, in long-term memory uh, when we get back to school. So I'm wondering if you might talk a, a bit, Sophie, about uh, what it means to overlearn a concept. Mm. Hi, Laurie, and uh, it's great to be here and on our Q&A, our weekly Q&A here from Australia. It's, it's always uh, fascinating to be thinking about um, your school term because you are nearing the end of the school year and we are really starting our school year here in Australia. But I think that we face really similar issues about what are the priorities and what do teachers at the moment, given that they don't know how long this is going to particularly last for, what do we prioritise? And certainly what we know about learning is that when concepts are very shallow or very uh, surface level, that it relies on working memory. So those kind of things that are the rote and recitation um, are what I would be calling a surface level concept, uh, something that has a predisposed answer, something that doesn't require any type of connection or application um, or problem solving to get to that answer. So something very black and white that there is quite a specific answer for. So when um, learning concepts rely on that, um, it doesn't take us into what we would call that, that deeper level of learning. And when we have that deeper level of learning, the surface and the deep are just as important as each other. But it is definitely a process to move from surface through to deep. So that sweet spot in the middle of what, what we would use, one of the things that, um, that I've used and that I was introduced to by John Hattie's work um, initially and that I've taken a personal uh, really strong interest in is the solo taxonomy. Um, it's, it's a simple and robust framework that allows teachers to move from surface to deep and it really engages students to move from surface to deep. So within that solo taxonomy, um, as opposed to say Bloom's taxonomy that many of our teachers, uh, when you and I were teaching, that we would have definitely used, um, or teachers are still using, there are levels of complexity there that students can engage in easily. And so the solo taxonomy allows students to be very much a part of that process um, to move from surface to deep. And so um, that first level of solo is unistructural where um, uh, one idea is being taught. So one simple idea, um, if we use Lego as a, as a metaphor, it's like one piece of yellow Lego. Uh, then we move um, into multi-structural and that is where we have singular pieces of information. So we might say, well, I've got eight pieces of information or four pieces of information, but they're singular. So again, with that Lego metaphor, you might say, I've got a yellow piece, a red piece, a blue piece. Um, if we stop there, then we know we've got Lego pieces and we know that they're coloured. But essentially we might forget about well, what color was that or what shape was that? And so what we really want to do is when, the, when that knowledge is, is, is gained and is learned, we want to be able to say, well, let's move into that deeper phase. Um, 
in that deeper phase, that's where, you know, we, we start to make connections. That's where that application stage is. And uh, as far as solo goes, it's called relational. It's when students are really starting to make connections, that they're using that knowledge of the colours and the shapes to then make, you know, more informed decisions. If we use that Lego metaphor again, um, it's where we might use the box of, of Lego, look at that picture and follow the instructions. So we're putting all of that knowledge that we have. Um, that last part of the solo taxonomy um, is called extended abstract. And that's where we use all of that knowledge to form whatever we need. So for example, it might be a car, it might be a spaceship, it might be whatever we need to build, but based on that knowledge that we've already used, if we're again using that, that Lego concept. The importance of doing that is that we're actually moving through those stages. What happens a lot in teaching and learning is it often will stay in that surface level. But sometimes we actually go too deep too quickly. And so particularly in, well, actually in all subject areas, but, but often in math, if, if we have a, a group of students who are not learning that, that concept very easily at all, perhaps we need to move back to those surface level concepts. Um, perhaps we move into the deep and then we actually need to go back into the surface. So it can be, we, we need to judge at what point do we need to go. But it really highlights the importance of learning as being sequential. Now, if we are panicking about this pandemic, which, you know, most of us are because mm -hmm. it's, it's dreadful. But if we're looking at learning and then we, we say, okay, well, I want my students to learn lots and lots of concepts. Um, and I need them to learn lots of concepts very quickly or on a daily basis, we may only teach surface level concepts. So the idea of saying, what can I teach and teach well that has impact and really think about learning in a sequential manner to say, let's get past the surfing surface and get into that deep level learning. And let's look at what that is. And solo taxonomy is a, is a terrific tool in the, the section of um, the big ideas uh, text that I wrote about learning intentions and success criteria. We use solo taxonomy to build up those verbs so that we know that we've got surface level and deeper level success criteria. So people can go to that for further information. And I know you uh, refer to this a lot as well, Laurie, because it's, it's so easy to use and it's a nice way to transfer that information to teachers. But what I would say to teachers right now is don't try and teach lots and lots and lots of concepts because you want them to learn lots of concepts. Think about the concepts that really matter and how can you ensure that you are moving from surface to deep, but also that balance of not staying in the surface too long because it's too boring if, if we're just, you know, <laughs> we're repeating the things that we know. So this is where really good data and assessment is important. So really connecting to what the students know. Um, and when we know that they know those surface level concepts, how do we move into that deeper level learning? And, and remembering that every child needs to get to extended abstract. So no matter what, it's not about students who are struggling, stay in, in that, that surface level and students who are, need to be extended uh, cognitively that they're in that deep level, it doesn't work like that. It's every student having the opportunity to get there. It may look very different in different ways, but it's about everyone getting to extended abstract because what extended abstract actually does is it gets to transfer. Now, every researcher, including John Hattie, or whether it's Mazzano or whoever, the, you know, the, the researchers who have really looked at pedagogy and teaching and learning, um, Jay McTye and UBD, transfer is the key word that they use. And so we can't get to transfer if we don't get to deep. We really can't get to deep in a, in a true way of understanding if we haven't mastered surface. Um, but we want to be able to get through those concepts. Fairly well, big uh, amount of things there that I've discussed in a really short time. No, no, but, um, it's, it's certainly so important, Sophie, because as we look at, um, at our curriculum, certainly yeah. there should be uh, some guidance there in, in terms of what are those, those big concepts that we want to make sure that students are learning at a very deep level so that they can indeed transfer them, uh, transfer them in, in new learning uh, in the following year or in the following course. 
And if, if we, as you said, if we continue to teach many concepts at that surface level, uh, it's only in that working memory today. <laughs> uh, and, Absolutely. And for a few days, and it's not going to uh, allow that student to make the connections that are so necessary uh, as, they, as they move forward. So I, I think in the time that we have remaining in, in the school year here in the United States, looking at uh, what are those big ideas that I want to ensure that my mm. students, truly all students, uh, have really understood and are learning at a deep enough level so that it stays with them in, in long-term memory. And those are the ones that we really want to focus on and, and actually overlearn, um, as, as I posed earlier to you. So I think the solo taxonomy certainly does give us some opportunity to think about how do we structure uh, those lessons? How do we still pay attention to, to teacher clarity, meaning the importance of, yes. of uh, identifying what it is we want our students to learn and how they will know that they have been successful and to change that, that success uh, as students are going deeper and deeper in their learning. And so plan for those, those, um, those opportunities so that there's, you know, if, if kids are really passionate about some particular topic, try to integrate that into those yes. lessons because that's where that, that connection can be made. And I know that, that you this week talked a little bit in, in your blog and in your video about the connections to what students are interested in. So I want, wondered if you want to say a little bit about that. And we've got your dog is barking away <laughs> there. That's not very pleasant. I apologize. Uh, yeah. uh, in week two, I talked about exit tickets. And so um, the importance of really connecting with what the students know. So I think that's really important for teachers right now to say, what do they know? Because how quickly can I move into that deeper level? Right. Um, and, and as you said, um, and your lessons this week are about being connected to things at home. Uh, I introduced my two children, Poppy and Charlie, in the video talking about Minecraft and talking about games that we were playing. So if there are concepts that say, for example, um, we know that children are playing Monopoly or we would encourage them to play that if they were talking about money or if they were talking about problem solving and certainly with Minecraft as well, if they're playing these games, if teachers can even seek to find out well, what concepts are actually being taught that I could link up to the teaching and learning. I think that that um, is a great tool because we want to make as many connections as we absolutely can so that it doesn't just rely on working memory that we are moving into that transfer phase of learning. And, and certainly what, what you bring up, Sophie, is that uh, mathematics is more than just the, the, the concepts and skills that, that we are teaching. Uh, those are the content standards uh, in anyone's curriculum. But we also have something that's referred to as the process standards, the way in which students come to understand the mathematics and be able to apply the mathematics. And when students are, are playing Monopoly or Minecraft, any of those video games and, and many, many of the, the board games as well, they're really um, focusing on some of those process standards. And, and that's wonderful for me. I mean, I, I think that's great that, that parents have the opportunity to really delve into not just concepts and skills of mathematics, but the process of learning mathematics mm -hmm. and how we apply it. So the reasoning, the problem solving, the communication, the connections, all of those are really important um, parts of the mathematics curriculum and so uh, parents should be embracing that that opportunity with students so I, I want to summarize our, our, um, our Q&A here today, Sophie, uh, that uh, again, the question was posed to us, what do I focus on now uh, in the remainder of the time that we have? And I think our, our message to, to teachers would be focus on those big ideas, those big concepts, the, the big, um, you know, the, the major clusters, uh, if you will, of our curriculum. And what is it you want students to learn really well, meaning to really go deeper in their learning and understanding of that concept and to be able to plan accordingly to make sure that all of our teaching is not just at that surface level, that we give yep. students the opportunity to go deeper in their learning so that it will indeed um, stay with them for, uh, for not only the remainder of this year, but they'll have access to that concept or skill next year because we know that there's going to certainly be a lot of um uh, of re replanning or reteaching of, of certain concepts but the big ideas you really want kids to to have in hand so yeah. thank so thank you sophie for being with us today um uh, Thanks, go, and, go, and, go and pat that dog now 
<laughs> yes, I will. I will. I just, I just wanted to, to really add though that um, whilst the whilst the temptation is there to teach lots of concepts as we've mentioned, I think that um, really ensuring that and perhaps using solo as a just a bit of a, that framework and a grounding point to say what is surface and what is deep and let's not go too deep too quickly, but let's not stay in the surface and let's have a really nice balance of whatever we want to teach really well and ensure that learning is progressive in that sense that we're teaching that concept, uh, whatever that may be, um, very well. Absolutely. Because there will be time to plan for recovery, which we know is Absolutely. a natural part of moving forward. Um, uh, for all of our students here. So thank you for being with us uh, today. Thanks, Laura. And um, we look forward to more questions from you in what, whatever uh, form you want to share them in whatever social media program uh, that you are using. So thank you again. See you again next week. Bye. See you next week.